proud to serve Northeastern and Central Pennsylvania. This is WNEP 16, the news station. Now, Nolan Johannes, Karen Hart. Chief Meteorologist Tom Clark with his backyard forecast and Joe Zone on sports. This is the News Watch 16 update. Good evening. The journey is almost over. After 82 days and almost 9,000 miles, the Olympic torch is now just a few miles outside the Olympic Complex in Los Angeles. It still hasn't been announced who will carry the torch in the opening ceremonies of the Olympics tomorrow. Speculations range from Nadia Comaneci to Michael Jackson. The torch was carried through a total of 38 states on its cross-country journey, and it's estimated that 30 million Americans saw the flame being carried by the runners. Some experts are wondering how many people will watch the actual Olympic Games because of the communist boycott. We sent Nightbeat reporter Dan Fiorucci out tonight to check out the local interest in the Games. <laughs> The 1984 Summer Olympics get underway this weekend, minus teams from the Soviet Union and most Eastern Bloc countries. But will the absence of the Russians stop people from watching the games? Most folks say, yet. No, I feel that uh, the Olympics are a uh, representation of all countries, and if a country chooses not to be there, well, it's too bad. But I, it won't deter me from watching them, no. It's the first time the Olympics have been in the United States since, uh, since they had them here in the 30s. I think the people in the United States are looking forward to having them here again. But in stores like Prince and Things, Olympic artwork like this hasn't been selling the way it should. I expected, really, when I heard they're coming in, I thought they were going to go like hotcakes, but really not as much as I thought. And here at gift shops like Spencer's in the Wyoming Valley Mall, Olympic items like this T-shirt haven't been selling well. They They've had to be marked down. They haven't been selling good at all, I wouldn't say. We have some other plaques and um, posters in the back that are also marked down. It hasn't been moving. Nonetheless, people insist their enthusiasm for the games hasn't died down. Though some of those Olympic fans are a little hard to believe. Uh, um, yeah, I like the Olympics. I like the football games. Football games. Dan Fiorucci, Newswatch 16 at the Wyoming Valley Mall. Pennsylvania Power and Light says it needs more money to help pay for its Unit 2 nuclear reactor at the power plant near Berwick. And that's one of the reasons PPNL is asking for another rate hike. If the increase is okayed by the state, those of you who get your power from PPNL would see your bills go up by more than 23% over the next few years. The hike would be phased in. The first increase would come in April of next year, raising the average monthly electric bill about $4.5. The second part of the hike would come in April of 1986, increasing the average bill about another $5. PPNL hopes phasing in the increase will make the hike less of a shock to its customers. Some railroad freight customers in central Pennsylvania will be paying their bills to the counties in the future. 82 miles of former Conrail track have been purchased for over $2 million by an authority from Center, Columbia, Montour, and Northumberland counties. That money came from federal and state governments and the rail users in those four central Pennsylvania communities. A little later, it may still be July, but the new winter fashions are already here. We'll try on the latest creations from Paris as Newswatch 16 Update continues. <laughs> This week on Pennsylvania Outdoor Life, we'll show you a different way to hook a big one. Then, we're off to Shawnee on the Delaware for a fast-paced canoeing adventure down the Delaware River. Plus, sailing the wild blue yonder of Lake Wallenfallpack. All at 7 o'clock on Pennsylvania Outdoor Life. Tomorrow on WNEP TV 16. The rainy weather has not put a damper on Lehman's 40th annual horse show. The weekend event kicked off with a parade downtown Route 118 in Lucerne County to the showgrounds in Lehman. There were plenty of fire engines to please the kids and a few hobos and clowns to spice up the parade. Then to the grounds for food and fun. The activity runs through the weekend with the big horse show itself on for tomorrow night. We showed you at 7.30 here on Channel 16 that the rain did not wash out Festival 84 in Lackawanna County. It's the annual fundraiser for St. Joseph Center for the Mentally and Physically Handicapped. It serves 22 counties. 
This year's festival is even more important than any other because the center here in Dunmore is fighting back from a costly fire last month. All weekend long, Festival 84 is offering all kinds of food, entertainment, and lots of fun, and it all benefits the children at St. Joe's. All right, big weekend's coming up, and yeah. I guess, as you say, you were there live tonight. Regardless mm -hmm. of what the weather is, you can still have fun at an outing like Sure, there tonight. were a lot of people there, and probably more coming this That's weekend. Right. How about it, Paul Hepner? How's the weekend look? I think the weekend is shaping up to be much nicer than the way it was today, Nolan and Karen. Uh, but we did have a decent amount of rain today. Looking at my rain gauge right now, I'm measuring 1.1 inches of rain here in Avoca, and I got reports from just north of Scranton of as much as three inches of rain today. So it's good for the gardens, but we've had a fairly cool, wet season so far. I think a lot of us would like some warm sunshine at this point. We're working on it for the weekend. Here's the current reading in a soggy backyard with a light drizzle right now. Readings are in the low 60s, 62 degrees, relative humidity standing at 86%, and the wind north at 8 miles per hour. Barometer rising, 30.00 inches. The high temperature today was 66, low temperature last night coming in at 63 degrees, and the normal high, 82, record high set back in 1964 at 94 degrees. That's a view there of the fountains in Wilkesbury. All right, some water uh, falling in the fountains and some water falling in the sky, especially over northeastern Pennsylvania. Uh, we had a, a rain shield right down along the coast, but as we take a look back to the west and northwest, you can see some clearing out there near Erie and uh, also some pretty hefty thunderstorms down over the southeastern states, down over North Carolina. Fayetteville, for instance, had a tornado, not in the town, but pretty close to Fayetteville, and some pretty hefty rain spreading down along the southern tier of uh, Texas with some uh, flooding out there, about four inches of rain, also more flooding back up through, Rocky, through the Rockies. Now, tomorrow, we'll expect to see that cloud shield moving down to the south. Here's what tomorrow's weather map should look like if you're planning to head to the coast. As I see it right now, the clouds will be progressing southeastward. Uh, temperatures will be in the 70s, uh, 77 degrees here in Wilkesbury, Scranton. And as you can see, just back up over my shoulder here is a high pressure system. That high pressure system sh should gradually uh, push this cloud mass out to sea. And as I see it on Sunday, some fair weather, some, some better weather should be coming in with that high pressure system sliding off like that. But here's a cold front that we're looking at, which is going to be right down to our south. And with the jet stream winds coming up right along that cold front, it's going to be kind of hard to push everything well to our south. And so, for instance, if you're heading out to the Jersey Shore uh, tomorrow and on Sunday, you can expect to see some cloudiness. More so tomorrow than on Sunday, the clouds should break up a little bit. And as I see it, um, perhaps a better day for the beach on Sunday out there. Best weather will be to our northwest. Okay, let's check out the forecast now for tonight. As we see it, okay, we don't have the forecast for tonight. Let's check out the sunrise and the sunset for you. The sunrise coming up tomorrow morning, oh, around 5.55, and the sunset tomorrow evening at 8.23. Forecast for tonight, we don't have it on the computer graphics, but let's show you on the board. Fog tonight, some drizzle. That should be ending later on tonight, the drizzle that is, but lots of fog in the ridges, 60 degrees for a low. Variable cloudiness tomorrow, about 76. I think most of the sunshine we'll see will be during the afternoon hours. Then coming up for tomorrow night and into Sunday, some partial clearing, partly sunny skies on Sunday. Sunday should be the better of the two weekend days. Temperatures getting close to 80. A little bit of sunshine, maybe a shower on Monday. Temperatures will be close to the 80 degree mark. And as I see it, some better clearing coming in for Tuesday. Temperatures getting well up into the 80s. Karen and Nolan, today's high temperature was not very um, uh, promising. It certainly didn't feel very summer-like. No. no it certainly did not. Not conducive to summery activity. But by next week, I think we'll get it in here. I okay. hope so. I want to get rid of this cold. <laughs> I want to get a tan. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Paul, good luck. <laughs> well, it's time for a checkup at the Newswatch 16 Update Video Zoo. The patient, our plump and getting plumper, Panda Ling Ling, who we're almost positive is pregnant. We've been on a motherhood watch in Washington since March 19th. That's when zookeepers believe the magic moment happened. Well, Ling Ling's pregnancy test came back positive, and we're told she's been gathering bamboo twigs for nesting material. You've heard of that nesting instinct. Ling Ling's first baby died last summer shortly after birth. If she's really pregnant now, the panda papoose should arrive in August. 
We just know Ling Ling's mate Sing Sing will be a proud panda papa. Quick, everybody send bamboo twigs to Ling Ling. Yeah, a little big nip. Right. Coming up, what they say you should be wearing, ladies, this fall. <laughs> Plus, Tim Carlson in for Joe's own with Bobby Knight's ideas on his Olympic basketball squad. And the Cubs and the Mets at Shea. The 16 sports screen is next. Hi. I'm Bob Valiante, coordinator of the Diocesan Service Team for the Charismatic Renewal, inviting you to a weekend of prayer, praise, and fellowship at the University of Scranton, August 3rd, 4th, and 5th. For further information, call 344-2214 or write CCR P.O. Box 3306, Scranton, Pennsylvania, 18505. In Greek mythology 2,000 years ago, Jason and the Argonauts took a four-month sailing journey from Greece to what is now the Soviet Union. Now it appears that 3,000-mile journey is possible. The small British reconstructed ship, like those of the earliest seagoing vessels, was met in the Black Sea by the Soviet vessel, a state-of-the-art training ship, after the tiny boat had logged 1,500 miles at sea. The final effort by the British explorers, 19-man crew, came as they literally hauled the Argo through the shallow waters of a Russian river to their destination, the city of Vanny in old Georgia. The story of Jason and the Argonauts lives on. Boy, that takes you back sometimes, yeah, doesn't man. it? Well, it takes me back to uh, <laughs> English class in high school. <laughs> 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 yes, not that far. Right? Okay. In the one-room schoolhouse. Yes, okay. Right. No, I'm oh, sorry. Oh, oh, yeah, that's not nice. I'll okay. get you. <laughs> sorry about that. <laughs> Where were we? Oh, I Big know. Big crowd at Shea That's tonight. right. There was, as a matter of fact. Yeah. 51,000 plus paid tonight, and they're loving it in New York. And you know what seems funny to say? The Cubs, he'll get me, too. The Cubs and the Mets... The two top teams in the NL East battled at Shea tonight, you know? Well, it may not roll off my tongue, and I may not be used to saying it, but believe it, buddy, they are just that, the two top clubs. Now, we would add highlights for you in the screen, but I'll tell you what. We're not allowed to use highlights from a game until it's over. So it's not over yet, folks. It's 2-1 in the ninth inning. The Mets are leading the Cubs right now. We'll keep you updated. If we get a score before the show's over, we'll pass along to you. All right, the Phils at home tonight with Montreal. Too bad it wasn't rained out. The Phils got hammered 6-1. Steve Carlton loses. The Phils in danger of falling six and a half back. And Paul Owens wants to do this another year, folks. He signed a one-year contract today. All right, let's go to the scores. National League, all right. Two to one. The Cubs are trailing the Mets in the ninth inning. Montreal beat the Phillies six to one. Three two, St. Louis over Pittsburgh. And that was in 10 innings. Houston leads San Diego two nothing in the second. Cincinnati, LA, no score in the first. Atlanta, San Francisco, no score in the first. In the AL tonight, Yanks lead Chicago, 8-6 in the seventh. Boston lost the first game of a twin bill, 9-1 to the Tigers. Boston leads the second game, 4-0 in the eighth. Kansas City took Milwaukee in game one, 12-8 in the second game. The Brewers lead 3-0 in the second. Texas over Toronto, 4-2, that's a final. Baltimore edged Cleveland, 4-3. California trailing Minnesota, 2-0 in the seventh. Oakland, Seattle, no score in the first. The U.S. Olympic basketball team, odds on to win the gold medal, mainly because they're loaded with great college talent. Bobby Knight, the coach, hopes his squad of stars will show up not as one-dimensional players, but as complete players. Offensively, uh, defensively, in many cases, other people are, are doing the guarding and, and they're being protected defensively. Uh, other people are doing the passing, the ball handling, the screening, and it culminates in each of these guys uh, being the bottom of the funnel, in other words, taking the shot. And so now, uh, as we put this team together, I think it's imperative that, that we have a few of these guys guard somebody. I'll tell you something. You can bet they're going to win the gold medal there. All right, tonight we go inside the Olympics for the finer points of one of those events that's not seen every day, folks, believe me, the shot put. All right? The shot putter maintains hand contact with the shot as long as possible while generating body and ball speed across the ring. Leaning across the back of the ring, in effect, enlarges its diameter, giving the athlete more room and time to develop necessary speed. The explosive release sends the heavy shot flying about 70 feet for both men and women. The next trick is to retain balance and stay in the ring. All right. 
jockeys full of mud at Pocono Downs tonight. We watch the stretch of the third feature and check out the winning combos. Daily double, one and one, thirty dollars twenty cents. Third race triple, nine six three, sixty dollars thirty cents. The feature won by Buzzin Greg. All right, let's go to the fishy forecast and see what's happening for tomorrow. Where is that? 6.15? I'm not getting up that early. 1.30, that's more like it. And I'll go out and do some fishing. May you have happy. a long day. <laughs> I'm <laughs> like it. One room schoolhouse, it was just... No, uh, that's okay. okay. I you understand. Know, but I won't forget it. I'll feed the young guys. Yeah. Yeah. That's why we need to have Cubs highlights. Yeah. Okay. All right. All right. He works on the weekend, folks. We have the weekend off. Okay? Yeah. <laughs> and coming up next, the hot new winter fashion, straight from Paris. But now, here are tonight's winning lottery numbers. The daily number is 274 on tonight's lotto numbers are 35, 23, 13, 10, 18, and 27, and the alternate is 4. We'll be right back. And finally tonight, it's that time of year when we all get to do a little window shopping courtesy of Newswatch 16 Update. The French fall and winter fashions have hit the runway, so let's get a sneak preview from Paris. The Chanel collection is buttoning us up on those cold winter nights with gold buttons and ropes of pearls. You might want to start that diet now to fit into these snug skirts. But if not, you can choose a Louis Faro walking suit layered with caplets and under jackets. If formal dancing till dawn is your desire, here's drama for you. Glitter from neck to wrist to ankle. But the showstopper on our shopping spree, this flirtatious frock, totally Parisian. Ooh. Yeah, including the cigarette, right? <laughs> oh, my. Oh, well, anyway, that's Paris Fashions, and that's our report for tonight. And don't forget the weekend team, half of which is here tonight for the Newswatch 16 weekend tomorrow and Sunday. And as we say goodnight, we'd like to show you some scenes from tonight's parade in Lehman, along with the names of the people that bring you Newswatch 16 to your homes. Good night. <laughs>